Creativity is using your imagination to do something new. We can be creative because God is creative, and each of us is made in God's image. I mean, if you think about it, we use our creativity for so many things. You might come up with new ways to score points in a sport. You might create a new recipe for a delicious cookie. Or you might use your creativity to make bracelets for your friends. We usually think about art when we think about creativity, but even within art, there are so many different ways to be creative. Some people simply use pencils, others use paint, some use photography, some people use their imaginations to create some pretty wild and cool art with mixed media. Of all the ways to be creative, God's it because God made us to be that way. It's like our memory verse this month tells us, we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Ephesians 2.10. Let's try that one more time. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Ephesians 2.10 Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow. I'm trusting you.
Today, we're back in the first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. In Genesis, we read how God created the whole world and everything in it, including people. But people turned away and broke their relationship with God. Still, God had a plan to make things right. God promised to bless the whole world through the family of a man named Abraham. One of Abraham's great-grandsons was Joseph. God had given Joseph a special gift. Joseph was able to understand the meaning of people's dreams. But this gift got Joseph in trouble with his brothers because they were jealous of him. Long story short, they sold him to be enslaved in Egypt. Then Joseph was lied about and thrown into the Pharaoh's prison. But God had also given Joseph the gift of wisdom and the ability to lead others. So even though Joseph was in prison, he was placed in charge of all the other prisoners. One day, Joseph saw that two of the other prisoners were upset. These men were the Pharaoh's baker and drink taster. Both of them told Joseph that they had dreams that left them confused. Because of his gift from God, Joseph was able to understand what their dreams meant. Everything Joseph told the two men came true. It was not good news for the baker. But the other man, the Pharaoh's drink taster, was released from prison just three days later. Joseph said to him, When everything is going well with you, remember me. Do me a favor. Speak to Pharaoh about me. Get me out of this prison. But when the drink taster got back to his job, he completely forgot about Joseph. Years went by. Yes, years. Joseph continued to serve faithfully in the prison. One day, the Pharaoh himself had two dreams that he could not figure out. No one could explain what the Pharaoh's dreams meant. At this point, finally, the drink taster remembered Joseph. He told the Pharaoh that maybe Joseph could help him understand his dreams. The Pharaoh told Joseph about his dreams. He said, I was standing on the bank of the Nile River. Seven cows came up out of the river. They were fat and looked healthy. They were eating the tall grass growing along the river. After them, seven other cows came up. They were bony and very ugly and thin. I had never seen such ugly cows in the whole land of Egypt. The thin, ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows that came up first. But no one could tell that the thin cows had eaten the fat cows. That's because the thin cows looked just as ugly as they had before. Then I woke up. In my dream, I also saw seven heads of grain. They were full and good. They were all growing on one stem. After them, seven other heads of grain came up. They were weak and thin and dried by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads. Whoa, those were some pretty crazy dreams, huh? Joseph told the Pharaoh that both of his dreams meant the same thing. The seven healthy cows and heads of grain represented seven years where Egypt would have plenty of food to harvest, more than they would need. But the seven skinny cows and dried up heads of grain meant that there would be seven years after that when there would not be enough food to eat. Then God gave Joseph a creative idea. Joseph told the Pharaoh that he should find a wise man to put in charge of the land of Egypt. During the years when there was lots of food, they should store up all the extra food they could. That way, during the seven difficult years, there would be enough food to feed the people. Pharaoh could see that Joseph was clearly the man for the job. He made Joseph the second in command over all of Egypt. During the next seven years, Joseph traveled all over, making sure grain was stored up for later. Then the famine came. 
no one could find enough to eat in Egypt or the lands beyond. People came from everywhere to beg Pharaoh for food. And he sent them to Joseph, who provided what each family needed to live. You know what? Even Joseph's own family came to Egypt in search of food. And in the end, God used Joseph's creativity to save Joseph's family too. God gave Joseph the opportunity to use his gift to solve a big problem. That's a really cool way that you can use the creativity God has given you. You can use what God gave you to solve problems. We all face different problems that we need to solve. Some of those problems might feel kind of small, like how to get all of your homework and chores done in time to watch a show before bed. Other problems might seem bigger, like how to deal with a mean kid at school. Or maybe you've noticed something in your world that isn't right, and you know it could be better. Here's the great thing about the way God made you and the creativity God gave you. You can use what God gave you to solve problems. Say that with me. You can use what God gave you to solve problems. And remember, you don't have to do that on your own. God has created us to help solve problems and make a difference in the world together. You can use what God gave you to solve problems. As we look back at God's story, we can think about how God has been solving problems from the very beginning. People turned away from God, but God had a plan to send Jesus to fix what was broken. Because of Jesus, we can have a forever relationship with God, and that relationship can help us use our creativity in big and small ways. You can use what God gave you to solve problems. Let's head to small group now and talk about some ways we can use what God gave us to solve problems. Love God, love.